So what you're seeing here is the final shots of a 10 shot string that I took with Ritter and Stark's new rifle that's going to be coming out later this year called the SLX. Now that means it's the short action, non-interchangeable magwell version of the larger SX-1 that we're going to review later next week. Now I sped it up so you could see that group come in and I'm not a great shooter but that's pretty impressive. Now we got over to Austria to see where they build these rifles and it's nothing short of impressive. It looks like something that NASA would contract to build space shuttle parts, frankly. All right guys, so we got inside to Ritter and Stark and I need to find Daniel, the production manager, to get a tour because I'm not a machinist and I don't know what all this stuff does, but I want to find out. So let's go find him. All right, so we found Daniel and it's about time to start the uh, tour. So Ritter and Stark is a very young company and you want to bring fresh ideas to the table yeah. in terms of precision rifles, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so um, you guys already have the SX-1 that's been launched and maybe something coming soon? SLX is coming soon. Ah, okay. We already show it on EVA. Ah, yeah, yeah. And it's already in process. Oh, wonderful. And we have a second generation which we are working on it. Ah. It will be like a hunting version. Okay. Which should also come to the end of the year. Oh, that's pretty exciting. So I guess uh, you want to get started on the tour and you can show me what all these machines do and how you guys produce some of these amazing rifles? Of course. Awesome. Fantastic. Now we are in our Rita and Stark warehouse where our process starts and the material gets to the saw. So you start out with a machine blank like this. Actually, it starts out completely unfinished with a raw end and they kind of chop it down to size. From there, we go to another machine where they profile it down to about this diameter, which I don't recall what it is by offhand, but they also flatten the end to make it nice and smooth and give it a bit of a chamfer for the machine process. So we go from there to the next machine where they start punching the barrel. And this is kind of a pre-chamber cut. And then the next step is cutting the portion that goes into the receiver, the chamber, well starting the chamber rather, and then the hole gets punched all the way through the blank. So now you've got kind of a unrifled tube. It's not been honed or anything like that yet. So next step we've got is the external profiling. And then past that, what they'll do is they'll move it to another machine, which hones the barrel and makes it very, very smooth and like nicer than any shotgun that I've ever seen. It's just a beautiful mirror finish. So we also still have that rough chamber, no locking lugs at this point. Then it moves over to the machine that cuts the chamber and the rifling, and, well, not the rifling, it, they cut the chamber they cut the locking lugs, and then it goes from that machine to another machine which uses a proprietary process to rifle the barrel within, I think it was 0 0.005 millimeter. It's an extremely small number that is just insanely hard to comprehend. I believe in inches it was 0 0.00003 inches. So that is the tolerance that they're able to get out of these machines. Every rifle barrel that comes off this machine is almost identical to the last one that came off uh, within a very, very small uh, you know, measurement. That's how they can say we guarantee 0.5 MOA out of each rifle up to 5,000 rounds for a 308 and 338 Lapua, and then 3,000 rounds for a 300 Win Mag. So we go from there to the step in the process where they lighten it with some polluting cuts in the barrel. You get the crown cut the muzzle uh, threaded with uh, M18 by one threads. Then you have the chamber cut and you know, that's about it. From here, it goes on to assembly where you get that barrel that we just saw. They affix the Picatinny rail and in this case, it is gonna be a 20 MOA rail. It's affixed directly to the barrel. So this way you can do caliber changes very easily. You can keep the scope on the gun it goes into the receiver, it clamps right here on these three holes, and then you get that zero, repeatability of zero. They finish it, apply a muzzle brake, and then it gets attached to a completed receiver. So overall, I think that the barrel process here at Ritter and Stark is beyond anything that any of us have ever seen. All right, so the machine you see behind me, they're actually using the machine Picatinny rails that mount to the top of the barrel. And it's about three times the size of my truck that uh, I normally drive every day. 
it's nothing short of amazing. Most companies out there will use an extrusion and then just do some minor finishing processes to make it work for whatever application they do, they're doing, which is just fine. But the commitment to accuracy and um, precision that Ritter and Stark has really shows here. Whereas other companies might use a simpler process, their machining, their Picatinny rails, their optics mounts from bar stock in three separate processes on, that, on this insanely impressive machine. Okay, so what we expected to find at the other machine is actually built on this one here, and that's the receiver of the rifle. So they start with a bar stock piece here, chuck it in the machine, and the first machining process spits out a product that looks a lot like this. And then it goes back in the machine in another fixture, and they finish the receiver out in this beautiful piece of uh, aluminum. And it's just beautifully machined, the surfaces are very smooth, and it results in a pretty slick little rifle. You can see here the three bolts that's used to hold the barrel in place right here. And then uh, this would be the magwell area, trigger pocket, and then the area for the receiver extension or buffer tube, whatever you might want to say. But it's so very cool, wow. Once you load the inside, and on the end, the finished part. Usually yeah. they have nobody be on the process, but when we say, okay, the first 20, 40 quantities which we did, to check dimensions fine, tools are right, program are nice, adjustable, then we say, okay. And then every 20 seconds is coming a new part out, you see? Yeah. The grip is going inside, take over the parts, and nobody, nobody touched in process. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. No human mistakes oh, allowed. So well. <laughs> Here, one of our employees is pre-assembling the rifle for a test, that we can make a pre-shooting and check if the, li if the rifle is... I, I see that the receiver is marked uh, left proofing. Yeah, yes. it means so, uh, barrel check. Ah, okay. We check with this receiver all the barrels okay with the magazine, ammunition, if the loading and unloading station works fine. Ah, okay, okay. So now it's made it up to a bolt at this point, yes? Yes. Okay. And they're serialized together? Yes. Very good. Part what you want to see is... So what's the outcome of this just outstandingly detailed process? Well, frankly, it's a pretty fantastic rifle. And here you see a rack of Ritter and Stark SX-1s ready to go out to their new owners and distributors. This is what will end up showing up on their doorstep. Minus the scopes, obviously, but it is a pretty darn cool rifle. This one in particular MSRP is for about $8,500 with the two barrels, both in 338 Lapua and 308 Winchester. Now, I took it out to the range, and I am really, really impressed with the gun. So, you'll have to check out the review when it comes later this week. Don't forget to check out our sponsors, Proxy Bit Inventory Munitions. Bye. Another one. All right.